In today's live stream video, we're going to discuss how to resell coach bags and more. Every Wednesday, I have a live stream interview where I usually interview another reseller and have them share their tips, tricks, and techniques on how to make us more successful and profitable to resellers. So if you are a reseller, then you are in the right place. I'm going to pop in a chat to say hello to a few people, and then we shall get started very shortly. I uh, saw so Glenn Swamp Picker was the first in the chat. Always good to see you, Glenn. Glad you could pop in. I'm sure you're probably getting ready to, to close the, the shop for the evening, but I always appreciate you popping in the chat. Kristen D, always good to see you. Veronica, good to see you. And Boo, we were talking about you earlier. You have to ask your, your sister about what I said about you when, when you talk to her later. Uh, Randy, I appreciate you being here and moderating. And I think Bobby, the cat guy in JT, was also in a chat. So, guys, I'm going to bring my guest on. I'm going to have her introduce herself. And then we shall get started. Let me bring on our guest. And our guest today is Dana Glamour's Closet. Let me bring her on and have her introduce herself. Hello, hello. Hi. You did a pretty good job. I am Dana with Glamour's Closet. You can call me Glamour. And um, I'm a reseller. Uh, I do, um, I, my sister and I do, I have a YouTube channel called Glamour's Closet. I resell on Poshmark uh, and to a smaller extent, eBay and also live auctions. And I'm a grandma and I'm a mom and a wife and a daughter and a, hopefully a very good sister. Very good. What part of the country are you from? I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, great. Yeah, buckle of the Bible Belt. So we're right in the middle. There you go. <laughs> okay. Good for shipping. Yeah, right, right, right. Because we got to consider now. It's, it used to be first class was first class. Now it's you know it's uh, weight plus distance. So and uh, exactly. You know, we, I've talked about uh, shipping quite a bit on this channel because obviously if you're a reseller, you have to know about shipping. Oh yeah. And with all the price increases that are going on, uh, and uh, for those of you, uh, you know, I have a I have a basically have a new sh show, so to speak, when I don't have a guest schedule. So the the week prior, I did a news show, and I did talk about the increase in shipping. Uh, just be aware, guys, that the post office is doing the pulsing shipping, supposedly. They're increasing the price of shipping uh, for the holidays, and they, they always say, oh, they'll, they'll drop it down. Yeah, they have to drop it down for about a week or two, and then they, they take a permanent price increase. So yeah. anyway, you, you want to be aware of that, so you have to you know, adjust your – if you need to adjust your prices on your shipping, you know, keep that in mind. It, you know, some people work really close. I, I typically have fixed-rate shipping is what I do. Everyone right. does it differently. That's kind of how I do it. So I, I kind of look at my listings and say, okay, well, my cost is going to go up 90 cents or a dollar, whatever it is. And I'll just typically just raise that. So that makes sense. Right. So that's how I did that. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in reselling? What, why did you get involved in reselling? Did you have family members or resellers? How did you get involved in reselling? I actually, it's, it's funny that you asked that um, at, at the beginning of the, of the P word, um, right. we, I was on, I was furloughed and I've always worked in the hotel industry, 32 years in the hotel industry, um, doing various things. And, and in the past 15 years that I've been in sales. So I did like group sales, room sales. And then, uh, in the past few years, it was catering sales. Right. So, um, because catering, obviously, you know, at, at the beginning, you couldn't have 50 people even in a ballroom, much less 400. Right. So our, so I was on furlough and I spent the first three months of furlough was the beginning, right at the beginning of summer. It was like April, May, June. And I just spent it, you know, just celebrating on my deck every day and gardening uh, and right. drinking with my day, drinking with my friends, having a great time. And and um, I thought, this is the life. And then by about the third month, I got kind of bored. And I started watching um, Texas Gal Jewelry Treasures on YouTube. Okay. And that's what got, kind of got me interested. So I thought, well, I'll do jewelry jars. And then I started seeing other resellers. And I just I just absolutely ran right into it. It was it was fantastic. It was it came along at the perfect time. I got, I got, I was watching a little bit of jewelry. I have, I have a bunch of jewelry that I have to get lists. I'm just going to have to get together with a, with a jewelry reseller and just go, yeah. through like, just go through like individual pieces and get a list of, because it's not doing any good. I call it a cash pile. Some people call it a death pile, but it's not doing me any good just sitting here and, and not, and not listed. But, That's uh, right. But uh, anyway, so, so I'm going to say a couple other people popped in the chat. Always good to see some of the people from Johnny's chats that popped in. I see sunny Las Vegas is here. Sunny, always good to see you. Uh, I said, I think I said a little Mike in the chat, Mike flipping goodies. Jessica Dumpster's girl is here from Johnny's chat. Always good to see you. And I just want to make sure. Oh, Myra, buying space is here. Always good to see you too, Myra. Okay. Let's get into a couple other things we wanted to talk about here. Um, 
why don't you tell us a little bit about about your your business model, so to speak? I know, I know you said you sell on Poshmark predominantly, and I believe mm-hmm. you do about eighty percent of your business on Poshmark, and you also sell on eBay, and as well as you do uh, eBay uh, sales as well. I'm sorry, uh, YouTube sales as well. Yeah, I do most of my sales on Poshmark. Um, it's just really user, honestly, it's user friendly, and especially if you're in the soft goods. Um, business. It, it's really strong on soft goods. They're starting to expand their platform to mm-hmm. like electronics and toys and stuff like that. But really for soft goods, it's, it, it's, it's always number one and, and clothing and fashion has always been, you know, sort of my number one interest it's throughout my entire life since I was a little girl mm-hmm. and I just fell in love with Audrey Hepburn and that Givenchy and, you know, all of the, all of the wonderful fashions throughout the years. Um, so I, I really fell in love with vintage fashion. That was my first love and it still is. Um, and I still sell vintage fashion and, and, and regular fashion as well. So, um, so I got into Poshmark for that. There are some things that I come across that I just can't leave behind. Um, there was a pair of LL Bean waiters. Okay. Um, and so I couldn't leave those behind. But there's a, they're not really that Poshmark friendly. People don't normally. Go- <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think you Poshmark yeah, buyers are looking so for LL Bean been- waiters. Exactly. So that's when the eBay thing started, like motorcycle jackets that are like serious motorcycle jackets, like the padded ones. Right. Um, and. Yeah, I would kind of think Harley. Da- I mean, I, I'm I'm assuming Harley Davidson probably sell better on eBay and it went on Poshmark, but I mean, you could sell on Poshmark as well. I'm yeah, I just and and the weird thing is that um, there are a lot of people who do like the cross selling. They have an inventory system that they're really smart about and they keep track of. I have an inventory system, but I'm just not organized enough. I don't think to sell on three platforms or or more. It, it scares me to death to sell the same thing across platforms. <laughs> So I actually list things on Poshmark or only on Poshmark, things in auctions or only on auctions, things um, on eBay or only on eBay. Now I do, I do offer things in auctions before I put them on eBay a right. lot of times because eBay's kind of a pain for me to list. Um, so I'm like, well, you know, before I put it on eBay, let's see if I can just get, you know, at least some of the money first. Mm-hmm. So um, I do that, but I, I do love, uh, I do love the auctions and I'm, I've gotten approved recently for whatnot. But well, I was going to call so, it a little bit, we can touch on a little bit later about whatnot. Yeah. Your opinions so on whatnot. that may be something that I'm, I'm, I'm working on next. Right. Okay. Uh, well, now when, when you go, when, when you're sourcing, like I said, you, you typically, you, you call them soft goods because I guess the difference between soft goods and hard goods, you know, but basically clothing, I guess, and accessories typically is what, what you would sell. Correct. Clothing, uh, hats, jewelry, makeup, clothing, okay. um, shoes, uh, you know, coats, things like that. Yeah. Now, where do you typically do your sourcing? Where How do you source typically? Yes, is my, is being my answer. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, we, we all have to source um, everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, like most resellers, I'll take any opportunity. Um, but f- the majority of my re- of my reselling sourcing uh, is from thrift stores, um, garage sales. Uh, I get, I have a, a really, really big family too. So I get a lot of um, free items. I get a lot of free donated items. My sister just gave me a, a load of stuff. My um, future daughter-in-law found out she was pregnant, and decided to get rid of her entire wardrobe, which included five bags full of clothing. Well, okay. So, yeah. And so I get stuff from like grandkids and I get, I get it all from all over the place. But, mm-hmm. um, but the majority of what I do it of what I thrift would be at like thrift stores or the bins or something like that. Right. Well, that, that's a pro tip too. We always, I have the vast majority of my viewers are experienced sellers when I'm trying to grow the yeah. channel and get on some, some newer sellers as well. But that's, yeah. that's kind of like, like one of the pro tips is like find things around your house that you can sell. So you don't have to invest money in and then yeah. lay that money and also tell your, your friends and relatives uh, or, or even neighbors, you know, I'm, I'm getting involved in reselling part time. And I, if there's anything you, you know, you're considering getting rid of, you know, you know, I, we love to go and take a look at it and you know, maybe I can resell it. I wouldn't offer them to give them money for it, but I mean, sometimes just say, well, look, you know, save me trip, take what you want and that, what you don't want, just, just donate, you know, redonate it. Yeah. I'm like, you know what, if you have to take a bag to the Goodwill, might as well bring it to my house. Cause you'll get a cup of coffee out of it and probably a hug. There you go. <laughs> and free, free is good, right? Cost, That's cost right. Good, free goods is very good. Free is always my favorite type of inventory. Yeah. Now you said you were doing uh, cosmetics and things. Do you do any mm-hmm. kind of retail arbitrage or any online arbitrage? 
Sometimes, yeah. Um, it depends on what I. It depends on what I find. Um, but there are um, there are some resellers too who uh, who sell new things on their auctions that they right. have. You know, maybe a pallet. Um, they buy by the pallet. So, you know, this makeup is, is they've got a hundred sure. of these or they buy um, or they do retail arbitrage and there's still enough meat left on the bone for me to, to make money on it too. Yeah. So um, I have like one makeup guy who I reach out to. I'm not going to tell anybody who it is. Cause he's my honey hole. No, no, don't tell okay, us. That sounds awful, but you get what I'm saying. No, absolutely. I'm <laughs> really I'm beat up I understand. Yeah. I always um, tell people, tell us your strip, but don't tell us your honey hole. You know, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> um, but he's he's a he's a makeup guy, and he gets me the higher end makeup. Okay. So I get like the nice expensive makeup, and I get it for in I get it inexpensively, and so I can resell it on Poshmark for, you know, what close to what it would be retail because it's new in the box. Right. Depending, I mean, I know people pop in and out of chat at different times. Sometimes they're lurking, sometimes they're talking. Yeah. You know, some people have like you know hookups for toys, or some people have. Uh, you know, hookups for, exactly. for, for athletic shoes or shoes or some people have uh, hookups for um, replenishables. Replenishables are great, like such as this makeup and things, because they're yeah. like, they continuously sell. You, you list. I wouldn't say you list it and forget it, but you can pretty much list it, especially if you have the quantities of something. And you know, maybe you have something you have 10, 10 units of it. You just list those 10 units and just it keeps selling. You sell a few every day. And you know, I, I always bring up Randy in my chat, my moderator. Randy has a. Uh, has a wholesale business, he has a reselling business, and he also has a uh, a website where he sells his products. But uh, he tells me too, he, he loves replans. And I mean, I when I first got involved, I got looked into doing Amazon. I was going to do retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, and it got to be a little overwhelming. So that's kind of, kind of why I went the route of eBay. Eventually, I probably get involved in uh, selling on Amazon or selling on uh, you know Walmart.com. Uh, yeah, like Mike flipping goodies and Randy do very well with Walmart. That's like the the really up and coming platforms and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, from what they're telling me, if one day it actually passes eBay. Uh, that that's just 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 growing like crazy. But I mean, re replans are great. I mean, especially if, if you have a hookup, like you said, you have a hookup where you can buy those, and people, you know, people use that. You know, it could be something as, as simple as uh, I don't know, the men's shaving cream. Right? Well, that's under pressure, so I don't know if I want to ship that. But you know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> you know, I, you know, there are some makeups too, um, and this happens with I think every woman in the chat who wears makeup has had this happen, where you have a favorite makeup, you have a favorite lipstick or a favorite foundation or a favorite mm -hmm. something, and they discontinue it. Right. So, right. so yep. discontinued colors of makeup or like brands of makeup are actually a really big seller for me. Like like colors that don't exist anymore, but people are absolutely that's their color. That's that's what they wear. Do you get involved in any all with, with perfumes or, or anything like that? Do you get... uh, some perfumes. I'm very, very cautious about okay, perfumes. Yeah, you yeah. can turn on a dime, right? So you have to be careful when you get a perfume. Like my sister, uh, my sister got a perfume that is just not her fave. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a full bottle of perfume and it was a very expensive bottle. Uh, so she gave that to me and she's like, here, if you want to try it. And I'm like, you know what? It doesn't. I don't like it either. And right. it was gifted to her. Um, so I said, well, do you want me to sell it? Or do you want, do you want to, I can give it to you back if you want to, you know, bring it back to the store or whatever. Um, and uh, I was extremely lucky to have a wonderful sister. And so she, she's like, no, just sell it and, and you know, we'll get the money. And I'm like, okay. okay. So we sold it. And, and that only had like two squirts out of it, hers and mine. <laughs> okay. But primarily with perfume, I tend to stay away unless it's like brand new in box and very recent. Yeah, I mean, I, I know, and I guess people are looking sometimes for discontinued, uh, whether it be makeup or, or fragrances too. So that's something, uh, like you said, you're very careful when you get involved with uh, with perfumes. Yeah, the alcohol and the oils in the perfume can turn on you. So right, that's that's a, that's a good tip. Absolutely. Like, yeah, you can't sell thirty dollar Avon still in the bottle perfume and expect it to smell good <laughs> $30 if I'm still in the bottle okay <laughs> that's, that's a pro tip right <laughs> yeah really honestly be careful yeah. um vintage Mary Kay is a gold mine it, that could be yeah vintage Mary Kay makeup absolutely I don't know about her perfume I haven't smelled it well that that's another pro tip too I mean always be on the on the lookout you know we'll call it a bowl though I guess for yeah. different things and sometimes you know they, they could have people that maybe were got involved in these um i don't know how do i say it politely we'll say mlas 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but David, David said, oh, this is ridiculous. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of doing this. I don't want to sell this anymore. And then they, they just liquidate everything. And maybe you can get, you know, 10 cents yeah. on a dollar on some of this stuff. And there's plenty of profit for you to resell That's right. it. That's right. Have you ever done any of that? Um, Not not when it comes to vintage makeup. Not that. Um, I did some, I did resell some, I found some candles. What was the candle place? Um, guys, help me out in the chat. The, the, who was Sensi? Was it Sensi? Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And yep. they had like, uh, they had like a huge thing of candles for like, and the lady was selling it for like two bucks and it was all the little, um, votive candles. And there are some people mm -hmm. who really love Sensi. Yes. So I just, I grabbed it. I popped it on eBay. I made 50 bucks on it and I got it for two bucks. So that was nice. Right. And like I told you, I mean, I have, I have a lot of, we'll call it soft goods or clothing, you know, commodities. I am trying to get more into the hard goods, but uh, you know, so, some of that stuff sells so, so very well, like Tupperware, for instance, especially yeah. over Tupperware has, has a, like a cold following to it. Oh yeah, definitely. I it. actually, yeah. If I can find the right Tupperware, I pick it up. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, why don't you talk a little bit about, uh, and guys, uh, I always, I tell you, people that are familiar with my channel, I always tell you I have, I have my information, my social media things, my, my links in the chat. I always list my my guests first, so I have uh, Dana's information as well, and um, I have some, we're going to talk later about her YouTube show and everything, but uh, I, the reason I said that in a roundabout, roundabout long, long way, <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk about her YouTube show little bit about some of her videos but you just recently did a video about posture va and you yes. were considering switching to uh poshmark's internal sharing uh software but you decided not to why don't you tell the, the people a little bit of why you, you went back to posture va yeah um I, I started with okay so i i've had posture va um since i found out about it honestly about a year ago i found out about it from another reseller and i'm like wow you can actually have something um share your closet for you and on poshmark the more that you share your closet the closer you get to the top of the of the search engine so it's very important to share your closet daily it's something that you ebay doesn't really have but it's kind of it would be akin to like new listings on eBay, how it kind of triggers that algorithm that right. puts you towards the top. Um, so new listings on Poshmark and sharing on Poshmark combined together to put you towards the top of that algorithm. So uh, Posher, Poshing, Posh, Poshmark sharing, blah, blah, Poshmark sharing, um, it, it's, it's also something that you do you know, that you would need to do daily in order to really make sales on Poshmark and really promote your closet. So they have a bot that actually does that for you that I think is 25 bucks a month that I pay for a Posher VA. And mm -hmm. it's got these automatic things where it, it'll like relist things for you. So it'll delist and relist items for you. So they look fresh. Um, it'll do, uh, it'll do sales for you. If you want, it'll send out like bulk offers, things like that. So I've been really, really happy with it for the past year. And then I was talking with a friend and she was telling me that that the Poshmark um, that the Poshmark generated mm -hmm. uh, tool actually had a bulk sharing uh, actually had a bulk sharing tool. So I clicked on that and I tried it and I was so surprised that it looked exactly like Poshmark VA to me. And so I was really, I was like, yeah. And of course I just tend to fly around, you know, I'm like, Oh, let's try this. So I, of course I went and I was like, Hey, Pasha VA, I don't need you no more. You keep your $25, blah, blah, blah. I'll see you later. And the next morning I wake up and I realize that I have missed out on so much. Pasha VA has, has a thing where you can actually preset the time to share your closet. You don't have to go in, click, scroll down and do all of this extra stuff. You don't have to do all these extra steps in order to do it. So for me, it's worth the money because I get faster, more efficient things. And so I had to reach out. Oh, my God. Adam, I had to reach out to Posher with my tail between my legs <laughs> and eat that humble pie and go, yeah, I'm like, baby, I'm so sorry. Can I have you back? <laughs> so I've, I've got my Posher VA back. But yeah, I... I did the experiment for about 24 hours. I will say that if you're on a strict budget, the group sharing thing on Poshmark is perfect. If you have more time than money, right? You, the right. group sharing thing is actually perfect. If you're new at it, 
I would definitely use it. Um, it, it it's a it's not that it's not a good tool. I just got really spoiled with my with my other with the tool that I was paying for. There was a lot lot more that that I could do with that. So, right. So and, and for the those people that are in the chat that that sell in Poshmark, like like you said earlier, it's it's kind of like listing on eBay. You have to kind of trigger that algorithm, and if you don't share your closet. You're not going to really get sales on Poshmark. I mean, you will get some if you have like, you know, unique things that people are looking for and, you know, very competitive prices. But my understanding is if you don't share your closet on a regular basis, you're not going to really do very well on Poshmark. Yeah, it's it's really, really important that you share a closet on Poshmark. It's not important. It's not as important. They make it sound like going to the parties and listing at the parties are really, right. really important. Right. Yeah. I ignore the parties. Yeah, I heard that wasn't all that. All that. Okay. Totally, but I'm not a I totally person. ignore like, yeah. those parties. I'm, I'm like, I don't care what tomorrow's party is because I'm going to be sharing in the middle of the party. I just set it up to share it because I know that that's, they schedule a party because they know that that's a more active time. Right. So because of that, I know that that would be a good time to set up my Posher VA to automatically share my closet during times like that. But as far as, as far as like actually going to the party, nah, it's just like, it's, it's, um, and I'm trying to find a really nice word for, um, for it. It's, overrated. How about that? It's overrated. Yeah. It's just, it's overrated. It's just everybody looking at each other's stuff going, anybody want to yeah. buy, you know what I mean? So it's just kind of, eh. So you said Pasha VA has where you can kind of kind of share your closets at certain times. Is there a way to kind of research that to find out what the best time is to share your closets? I just go, honestly, I just go by, um, by what I've seen in the past two years. After a while, you kind of get to know the rhythms. Okay. It's kind of like being a reseller online on eBay and knowing that Q4 is going to be like, bam, and that probably October and early November, early November is going to, is going to be when it really hits you like a right. freight train. So it's sort of like that where you, if, if you watch the rhythms enough and I was in sales, for a really long time. So I'm used to kind of watching like sales rhythms and, right. and finding out what's, you know, what, what are the best times. So um, on Thursday nights, the Adderall moms uh, between 9 PM and 1 AM. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's central time. Um, okay. But, uh, but strangely enough, um, Sunday nights, actually Sunday nights and Monday nights, I make a great deal of sales. Okay. Yeah, Monday during the day, especially in the afternoon when when people are in the office, but they're in the afternoon and it's Monday and they're bored and they're tired and they just want to go home. So a lot of them will get online and start and start shopping. Okay. So you share you share your your closet say Monday afternoons because you figure people will be looking for things at work on Monday afternoon. Yeah, I actually have certain time slots during the day where I okay. share my closet. Do you share multiple um, times a day? or? Oh, yeah, work? definitely. Definitely. I probably share 10 to 15 times a day. Oh, okay. Yeah, my entire closet all. And you, you can know, all set all that all up with Pasha VA. Exactly. Exactly. And just one click of the button and you can just set it up like that. So you don't even have to, you don't even have to go back and look at it. <laughs> Myra says, is that Adderall extended release? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Oh, Ambien. That's it. The Ambien. Uh, Ambien. Okay. Um, okay. Do you, I uh, just, just out of curiosity, I'm just throwing it out there because, you know, we're, we're all, you know, we're resellers. We're, we're here to try to try to generate some kind of income. Do you have a referral code for Posture VA in, on your, in your store? I or do your, your actually. Channel? It's in my, um, it's in my, every one of my, uh, every one of my videos in the description. description. Okay, guys. So if you, if you want to considering using Posture VA, uh, keep in mind, uh, Dana's, you know, when you go on her video, the link is in her, in her description of the video. So uh, that would help her out. It doesn't cost you guys anything. Do they get a discount? I'm assuming too, as well. Uh, I, that is a great question. I honestly don't know because okay. I don't use it that often. I know. I know. Well, I know there's a lot of different affiliate yeah, links. It, sometimes, yeah. you know, if, if, like, you know, the, the, the person that used the link gets a discount and sometimes the, yeah. the, the, the person that has the link gets some kind of a credit. So I, I know like StreamYard, I think it's $10. I think, I think the, yeah, uh, I think I've gotten like $10. one $5 credit from Posture VA. That was about okay. it. I okay. mean, it's, okay. but by the time I got Veronica, there, most of the other kids they already, okay. yeah. Ronnie says, yes, they do. Oh, okay. Ronnie knows. Okay, very good. Okay, why don't we get into, uh, we're gonna, like I said, the, the main topic, I kind of wanted to wait for the chat filled in a little bit, but we want to definitely talk about uh, selling coach bags. So let's get into talking about selling coach bags. Uh, and uh, you told me you grab a few different coach bags once you get into history about coach bags and uh, 
again, a little bit about what we should look for when we're sourcing, how to determine if the purchase bag is authentic or a counterfeit bag. Yeah, absolutely. Do you mind if I put um, you on full screen while you're doing it? No, that? I don't mind it a bit. That way we'll be able to see a little bit better. Okay. You betcha. Okay. Hi, Very guys. <laughs> it's still me. Um, so I brought a few coach bags with me uh, just to kind of talk about different coaches throughout, throughout the some of the decades. Um, and let's start with the, just kind of a general history of coach. It started off as the Manhattan Leather Company. So they were making they were making um, luggage. They were making saddles. They were making all sorts of things that uh, you would need um, satchels and things like that in the in New York City in the 1940s. And the couple that founded it, the lady decided in the 50s that they were going to add uh, handbags to that. And the guy who created it, um, the guy who created the, the, the husband decided that he wanted to have uh, leather that was glove tanned leather. Now, the interesting thing is a lot of people think that the glove tan leather means that they, you know, somehow have a like a glove and they tan it with it. That's not actually what they do. Um, when they say glove tan leather, what they're talking about is that they want to tan the leather in the same way, in the same manner and using the same process as a baseball glove. So that is why a lot of the coaches have this patina and they have this particular patina. And, and again, I, I just thought it would show up best on this super vintage coach from uh, New York. Um, and, and this has that patina where it, it looks like an older baseball club. Yeah, it does. So, um, so they started in New York city. Um, they became in the, in the late sixties, actually, they were selling their handbags, but they weren't, they weren't, really exploding on the fashion market. They were just kind of a mid-range sort of leather bag. Mm -hmm. And they hired a lady named Bonnie Cashin. And Bonnie Cashin was kind of known for her extreme utilitarian designs at the time, but also incorporating color into things that didn't have color. So she came along, changed the face of Coach, and, and uh, added color to some of the bags. Um, she also added things like kiss lock. She's very famous for the kiss lock. Can I um, interrupt you for, for people that don't know what kiss oh, lock, yeah. what, what is a kiss lock? A kiss lock is when I don't have one with me, but it's, it's, it's when you have uh, the top of a person, you have the two little balls like this. Okay. And then if you do like that and the balls come together and you have like the two little silver balls. Okay. I, I know what it is. I just know. What yeah, it is. that okay. connects okay. it. Okay. That's kiss um, lock. So okay. that is a kiss lock. Okay. Uh, and the coaches, and so Bonnie Cashin came in and she started redesigning coaches and giving them interiors that were striped. She had some cloth interiors. Um, she really changed the face of coach. She really freshened their brand mm -hmm. and made it more of, it got a lot more attention, made it a lot more fashionable, a lot more mainstream fashion. And so with the coach bags that Bonnie Cashin did, a lot of them were at this point, they're really highly desirable. Okay. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Sure. So, so the, after Bonnie Cashin left in the seventies um, and she went on to create her own brand of, of things uh, outside of coach. But after Johnny, after Johnny, I'm sorry, after Bonnie Cashin left in the seventies, um, coach decided in the early eighties that they would start, well, actually right about the mid eighties that they would start um, trying to number their bags. Okay. And the interesting thing about that is that if you're looking at, like if you're looking up a coach online and you're looking up a creed number and you can't find the creed number, but the coach looks a little more vintage, don't, don't despair because there is, they didn't have a system. They would just start numbering them randomly and they had no system by which to keep track of anything like the, the style, the brand, any of that. They were just like, Oh, let's assign it a random number. So not all of those old creeds with the old numbers stamped on them actually have a way to look them up. So if you look up an old, old, old coach and you're like, Oh, I can't find the creed number. So this must not be a, a real coach. I, I would beg to disagree and come sell it. Go ahead and send it to your grandma. Cause I'll take it for free. <laughs> okay. That's not a coach. The reason I know this is from watching your videos, but want to tell the people that don't know what, a, what creed is. I mean, I know creed is a band, 
but not with coach creed is not a band oh yeah the creed <laughs> is actually um and it's kind of hard to see on this one um the creed is actually a square in the middle of the coach okay. uh, on the inside and let's see if i can do it on my my old one this one's so dusty but so kind of this, like a generic term it would be like a leather tag so to speak exactly label. okay there is a label on the inside of a coach okay. gotcha. um on the inside of uh, Almost every coach. Now, if you get back into like the early 70s and the late 60s, you're not going to find them. Sure. Um, but uh, but starting in the mid 70s and all the way up until now, coach has a creed and that's a square um, sort of maker's mark, I guess, on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you see that creed, that gives you a lot of information. Um, it, it'll give you a uh, most of the creeds that were made from the mid nineties on will actually, they do have a style number and they do have a, a reason and a rhyme so that you can look those up. Yeah. So your sister said every time she th thinks about creed, she thinks about the song with white eyes. Wide open. <laughs> so do I, actually that's my favorite creed song, but I mean, and it's, it's funny because sometimes, you know, like, like you have to just, you know, well, they're saying about assume, and I, I try to get my show, you know, G rated, so I don't say what happens yeah. when you assume. But if you assume, sometimes things happen, and you know, maybe someone doesn't know what, what uh, you know, Creed is, or you know, sometimes I'll say Bolo, or I'll say, you know, FBM or FBA, and maybe people don't know it's you know, fulfilled by Merchant or fulfilled by Amazon or or Bolo is be on the lookout for. So sometimes we just throw these things out there, and you know, we have maybe have some newer sellers and they don't know what they are. So I like to kind of like bring them up as something that's maybe a little yeah. bit unusual. No, it's great. Okay, cool. Okay, so what, you, you were getting into the history still. I think we're up into the eighties now. Is that that's kind yeah. of when 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 uh, Coach kind of took off, right? As far as the pricing, like exactly. Randy said, they were kind of, not, I guess, inexpensive is, is relative, right? But back in the day, they yeah. were just more of a commodity, and now now they're more of a, a higher yeah. end brand. Coach really went mainstream, and they started to um, the 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 owners of Coach really started to expand their reach, and they started to sell in um, in. Uh, anchor stores and malls. So they would sell right. um, at Macy's, at mm -hmm. Dillard's, right. uh, it, at um, not really at Nordstrom Rack, but they would sell at sort of those mid range, you know, right. mid price. Right. Yeah, I remember seeing and, a lot of Macy's. Yep. Yeah. And at that time, it was Macy's and also, of course, Famous Bar and Sticks Bear and Fuller. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm dating myself, aren't I? <laughs> Well, like I said, I'm in the Northeast, so we we had a lot of Macy's around here, you know, back in the day. So and that, that's when I was in my my, my dating uh, time frame, so to speak, in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. <laughs> so this is actually one of the one of the bags. Now, Coach had sorry, its little hands are sticking up. I haven't uh, rewashed it yet. I I always take them out of the closet once a year. My collection, um, but this is a crescent bag, and this is from the mid 80s. And it's got a very mid '80s coach look to it, so it's very, um, it's very plain leather. It's got the brass because uh, all of their fixtures are either brass or nickel, so it's got the the nice thick brass um, hardware on it. It's got the the Creed is a little uh, the Creed's a little a little. It's inside and it's a little faded, so it would be hard for you to see. Okay. But see how it's got. Um, it, it's interesting to see because see how this vintage leather has. On the inside, it's not the shiny leather; it's suede. Oh, okay, it's almost like so, almost like a saddle, so to speak. Exactly. So, okay. so Coach had a much more. It's almost a super conservative sort of preppy look that they had in the '80s, and they carried that all the way through to the mid '90s. Okay. And the mid '90s was when Coach was sold, and they are actually, um, they actually started expanding what their what their bags look like. So one of the ones that I bought post nineties was something that you really didn't see a whole lot of before, which is, and again, this is, I'm so sorry. This one is really dusty, <laughs> uh, but well, we can't see the dust bag. too well in this. <laughs> it's an older coach bag of mine. Okay. Uh, this was a Madison um, and it was patent leather and it's like an ox blood red patent leather. But see, I wouldn't even know that was coach. Look at that. I wouldn't even think that was coach just from the look of it. Okay. Yeah, this one has a gold tone hardware, so okay. um, it it's still brass, right. um, but it has uh, and and the Creed has like the the uh, I'm sorry, the signature on the front has the horse and carriage. Is that kind of unusual for them to have that kind of glossy? I'm not calling it glossy finish. I could be using the wrong terminology, but that leather mm -hmm. right. is a glossy finish. Yeah, right. it's it's it was it was unusual at the time. 
it's more coach has expanded so much that it's got so many different different colors and and right. textures now um but earlier coach it was very very unusual when this first came right. out it was it was kind of groundbreaking really right yeah, yeah I, and so. I ran to the mall and got it immediately with okay. my very first the first time i did i uh had a uh had a sales quarter that bonused i i ran out and okay. I spent my entire bonus <laughs> on that bag did you do you ask for us gift cards back then like from your family members so you can get your coach bags at the, at the uh, macy's or wherever or doors or wherever you go <laughs> I would actually, because I was a young mother still, um, I would actually, for the most part, not buy new coaches. I okay. I really fell in love with the quality of the vintage coach. Okay. And that glove tan leather and that huge, that really high quality stuff. So I even back then I was carrying. You you were a thrifter like, back then. You were looking for right used. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, so, so, now, so now we're in what in the mid '90s? I think you, you said. That, yeah, and, that and sold, we, now, who, were they sold to a big conglomerate, or who, who were they sold to? I don't remember the name of the company okay. they were sold to. I'm so okay. sorry, and I should know this stuff off That's the top okay. of my head. Okay. But it's been a like I said, it's been Aaron Day. It's been quite a crazy. Sure, sure. Um, but they were sold to a to a much much larger company uh, that wasn't just. Um, I used to buy my wife a Coach purse every time she got sick, help make her feel better. Amen, Randy. Right. I, I that's a that's a good thing let me, let me um, interrupt you for one second Think, yeah. speaking of feeling better gino i'm ha very happy to have you pop in the chat uh gino is mm -hmm. a real trooper when gino was on a few weeks ago he was had a little flare-up of his emphysema and uh what gino's tell me he's feeling a lot better so i appreciate you popping in gino and saying hello Much and love gino it's great great to hear you're doing better gino yeah i'm glad to hear that okay so um, we were talking about the '90s, and Randy was saying that he used to yeah. buy when his wife wasn't feeling well. She would buy her coach bag and make help her feel better. So in the mid '90s, Coach started making um, nylon bags, okay, and and coated canvas bags, and that's when you start to get into the people who were doing knockoff coaches, because remember that most Coach leather bags are anywhere between three hundred and six hundred dollars. Yeah. So it's not a it's not a twenty five hundred dollar Louis Vuitton. So to copy leather. You're not making any money, right? Um, and, because and then again, you have to factor in sales tax. I, I remember when I when I when the woman I was saying at the time we went to an outlet in New yeah. York, and she wanted me to buy a leather coat. And in New Jersey, clothing is not taxed, so they had like an yeah. eight or nine percent tax. So I buy like three hundred fifty dollar coat, I pay like another thirty dollars in tax. So, so when you're buying coach handbags, that's obviously an accessory. That's like clothing. So you're going to pay sales tax on top of that three hundred fifty exactly. Price. Exactly. So that's when, um, but when coach came out with the coat of canvas, right. that's when they started getting knocked off. What so is, that's when you started, again, what, what is coated canvas? Coated canvas is, I, and I don't have a coated canvas with me. Cause I don't I'm just curious what it is. I, well, I, I never heard um, of coated canvas before. It's a, it's a canvas. It's, it's like a regular, like a tent canvas, but it's thicker. Okay. And it's almost got, it's all, it, it's dipped in a chemical and it's almost got like a really good, it's, it's a little more, it's not completely waterproof, but it's a little more waterproof than a regular canvas would be. So it holds up against staining a little bit longer. Okay. Okay. One of your faces in the chat. <laughs> Hi, May. How you doing, baby? Okay. So, um, so the, the, when the, when the coat of canvas came out, uh, people started, um, people Knocking started off, really doing a lot of knockoffs and then they tried with the leather, but you, with, with coach leather, you can always tell, you can always tell when somebody's handing you, you know, a, a nasty fake piece of leather. It's, so what, it's what are some of the things to be looking for with the leather for coach? Um, with the leather for coach. And let me bring back my favorite crescent bag. Um, notice how it's got that deep, rich sort of sheen. It's not shiny. It's sheen. Um, and it, it's always, even their patent leather looks like it's more than one layer of, it, it's got a really rich feel to it. Okay. Um, I would also take a look at the hardware because it's really important. They have good solid hardware. So if the hardware looks cheap, um, if it's not, if it's not heavy duty, if you feel like you could probably bend the hardware, that's not coach. Okay. That is not coach. They have thick nickel and thick brass hardware. Um, even you like were talking the, about, the, what, what, I, I, I can be mispronouncing it. Is it YK? What is the, the type of zippers you were talking about? Uh, the YKK zippers, okay. um, but they also had, there was another, there was another type of zipper that they had too. And it was, 
and I forget, I forget how it's spelled, okay. um, but it's, it starts with a T and they had another zipper in the, in the really vintage ones. Gotcha. Um, okay. The thing is that most people, most people who do knockoffs, most people who do copies for a sale are not going to take the time to, uh, they're not going to take the time to find a good quality zipper. They're not going to take the time to try and reproduce that kind of leather because if they were going to take the time to do that, they'd be producing actual yeah, good higher leather. End bags, right. Yeah. And, and a stitching typically too is something that would show up for Stip stitching, right? Stitching is number one. I actually, I was- First the, thing you would look for, I'm, uh, again, I'm, I'm assuming and get myself in trouble here. Yeah. And I, I would, first thing I would probably look for the leather quality and then the stitching. Um, It's the leather quality and then- uh the stitching is the stitching is important because if you see right. like zigzags or right. each doesn't do that, they do not do that. Um, if you see the stitching end before stitching should, that's a that's a sign of a shortcut. And you were showing you, the, something about the logos, the way they're they're kind of lined up. You were showing in one of your videos. Yes, and that is the that's the signature C. And there's a reason why I don't signature like C. signature C. Okay. okay. <laughs> signature C is the C for coach, and the two C's should be kissing very very lightly, like you'd kiss your auntie on the cheek. Okay. But they are not making out. Okay. So they're not intertwined. Like intertwined. They're yeah. Sort of, so if you see tight. them like this close, and they're okay. like that, and they're oh, they're overlapped. Um, also, coach is very very cautious about lining things up very very carefully down the Remember middle about there. it. Yep, yep. yeah they're very very careful okay. um so if you see your c's off center not the right thing okay um it, if you look at the hang tag if you here's my here's my thing too if you do if you do quality leather coach you're probably not going to go wrong with it it's it's really really hard to find a fake of those um, it's possible, but it's it's harder to find a fake of those. Typically, they will okay. fake. If they're going to fake anything, it would be the patent leather. Right, right. But the patent leather, again, this is what patent leather looks like from Coach. It's deep. It looks like it's like 12 layers of epoxy deep, right? Okay. Um, so it doesn't have, it's not like a, it's not like a, ooh, shiny. Um, it's not going to be a thin piece of leather. And be careful about that. Okay. Um, overall, I would say trust your instincts. It when in doubt, leave it out. Take it out of your yeah, car. Don't yeah. buy it. I was at the Goodwill uh, actually two two days ago, and I was checking out, and I happened to notice all the bags behind the counter, and I said, "Hey, can I can I take a look at the bags? Because I always like to check and see if I can get like you know on seventy five percent off day or something something good." Um, so she gave me three bags and there was a fossil and there was another bag that was just, it, I, I forget what it was, but it wasn't, it was, I, it wasn't anything that I was interested in. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there was a, then there was a coach crossbody. Okay. <laughs> a signature C. Um, and the C's were literally like this. They were just like, Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. And they were just a little so like within a sec, if you could tell that it, they were, it was kind of a. I could probably have told it from 10 feet away. That's no wow. lie. I've been collecting coach for a very, very long time. Let, let, me, let me ask you a question. And this, this is probably a, a touchy situation. Did uh -huh. you inform the, the drug store that it was counterfeit? Okay. I sure did. I know sometimes you got to be said, careful because, oh, another reseller. But they didn't know you were reseller when you're looking yeah. at it. Yeah. And I but, said, I said, I collect coach and I showed her my right. handbag, okay. which is a, which is like a crossbody. Um, sure. Anyway, uh, I showed her my handbag and I collect coach and I said, look, I collect coach and, and, and here's my coach wallet. Here's my coach keychain. I mean, I collect it right. and I've collected it for years. And that is a fake. I said, so if you want to, if you want to sell it like it is, I just want to let you know that, you know, if you sell it like it is probably illegal. Yeah. Because it is against the law to sell a knockoff coach knowing that it's a knockoff coach. So, um, and, you know, and and it was such a poorly made fake. I mean, the, oh, it was so cheap looking. You just, you get a feel for him, honestly. Okay. Is there anything else that we should be looking for? I mean, uh, we I think we kind of pretty much touched on everything to look for, right? Anything yeah, else I would say um, on the creed, uh, on the creed, always be cautious about, um, on the creed, the second group of numbers um, on the bottom of the creed, and I'll see if I can do that from my, I got gifted. My husband actually had this delivered to me on my birthday one year um, to my to my job. Uh, and this is a, um, it's a newer coach. 
and I had the original, the original chain was, uh, was gold. And I went back and I got a gunmetal one. So now okay. I have the gold and the gunmetal chain. Um, but this is just a little, you know, coach pocketbook. It's just a little smaller coach. Okay. Um, and this is, by the way, this is a kiss lock. Right. Right. That's okay. a kiss lock. Gotcha. So, uh, but the creed, the creed has, Oh, look, there's a quarter. I didn't know about that. Um, the creed on the second part of the creed, it's a five digit number and it does not have the letter F in front of it. Okay. If you see F, that means it's a factory outlet coach. So the resale value on that is going to go down. Yeah. That's, I guess, something to consider, right? So, yeah. So it's, so it has, it's it has an F in the, in the, the creed uh, registration number. What, what, what do you technically call that? Um, it, item number or what do they call it? Yeah. Well, well, we would just say the creed number, honestly. Um, if you're talking to, uh, if you're talking to somebody who's buying coach, you would just say it's the number on the creed. Okay. Um, Randy had a question about, are, are uh, coach or regular is worth money or not? Uh, they would be if they came, if you bought them from coach. Okay. Um, if not, uh, they would be an indicator that probably that was a knockoff. A knockoff. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's not necessarily so that it's a knockoff, but it would be seen by any collector or anybody who purchases coach right. that it would be a knockoff. So I would probably, your best bet is to, coach actually has a buyback program for some of the vintage ones. Your best bet would be to sell it to the coach irregular to sell it to the buyback program. If it's real, they'll buy it. I actually, I actually didn't ask you this, you know, or preach chat or whatever. I just, just kind of popped in my mind. Things mm -hmm. happen like that sometimes. Uh, well, if you go to a coach store, say an, a, not an outlet or just a regular coach store, will they authenticate, authenticate a bag for you? Would I say, I was curious if this is a coach bag or not. Can you tell me, will they do that or they typically wouldn't do that? Normally they won't. They will not do that. Okay. They won't. Um, if you walk in with a fake, they will know it and they'll tell, they'll probably tell you about yourself. They'll tell you to leave, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, usually it's just some sassy, you know, some sassy young person is like, oh, that's a fake. Um, cause but, yeah, but you if know, you're going with something and you're not sure that they will, they won't help you authenticate it, so to speak. Normally they okay. won't. Okay. Um, but if you, it, it depends on, you know, it's never what you say, it's how you say it. True. True. So if I walked in and I was like, Hey, you know, I collect coaches and I'm just not sure about that. What do you guys think? Right. But remember too, that you're asking a store employee right? that may have worked there for four months versus somebody who's yeah, been collecting true, for true. years. So. Okay. I uh, wanted to touch a couple other things, and then uh, Dana likes to have a little bit of fun, so we're going to have a little bit of fun at the end of the show, guys, so stay through to the end. We're going to have a little bit of fun at the end. Oh, you heard uh, that about me, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask you about a couple other things, and we'll, like I said, we'll have a little bit of fun. Sure. Um, you had mentioned earlier about whatnot. You're getting involved in whatnot now. Why do just touch on whatnot a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, there's not a whole lot to say. Mm -hmm. um, I did go through the onboarding process. Okay, so you had your onboarding? Okay. Yeah. I haven't scheduled my first sale yet. Um, and I'm kind of waiting until after my after the sale this Saturday, I'm hosting my first online uh, the, live the class, sale. The classic oh, crap auction. Yeah. So okay. I'm kind of waiting for that <laughs> because that's sort of my, can I honestly, can I, can I truly control a sales environment where it's just me and okay. how hard would that be to keep up with so that's kind of like your practice run so to speak exactly because from what i understand the whatnot pace is very very fast right that's why i hear telling you yeah and i am very very old so that does not always go together <laughs> So, so I wanted to see how it would work if it were just me, if I could keep ahead of things. Gotcha. Um, I do have a stack of vintage uh, because I did sign up for whatnot with vintage. Mm -hmm. So I have a stack of vintage accessories that I'm thinking about selling on whatnot is my first auction. They say that the more niche and the more narrow uh, that you put your title and the more narrow version of your category that you sell the better off you're going to do so i'm hoping that's the case i had heard if, if you go with vintage it's allegedly easier to get approved if you do vintage is that, is that the I, case did you hear that i don't know it took me okay. a couple of weeks but okay. i did have a horizon picks uh helped me sign up he signed okay. me up gotcha. so he i think I, referral I think sometime helped too as well if you refer yeah. to somebody okay yeah. So Roy, it helps you get involved in that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. 
Uh, going to ask you about two other things, and we'll get into the, the fun part of the show. Sure. Uh, you would talk to one of your videos about thread up fun boxes. Yeah. Uh, what what are they? You said they they come from Pennsylvania and Arizona. Is there a difference? And uh, I didn't really get too much as far as pricing on from the videos. Are there different pricing levels? Why don't you just tell us a little bit about thread up fun boxes? Sure. Thread up fun boxes are a lot like. Um, they're a lot like an Ipsy or like, a, a oh gosh, what was the other one that used to do the boxes? Um, they're, they're basically literally they're, they're like mystery boxes, so to speak. Yeah. What they were originally designed for was like kind of a girly mystery box. So here's some pajamas gotcha. and here's a little headband and here's some makeup and, you know, just fun stuff. Right. Um, the resellers started realizing that thread up was sending out mystery boxes, these fun boxes, and they were sending out some really good quality items for resale in those. Resale, so, okay. Yes. And those mystery boxes were actually quite inexpensive. When they started, I want to say they were $28. I think they're in the 30s now. Okay. And uh, that's going to sound really silly, but I bought mine from the last one that I bought was from a reseller because right. I couldn't get one. Couldn't get the line for those is around the block. Okay. Um, so you really have to be on top of thread up and you have to really like stalk the thread up site on the days when they normally come out Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I think. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you can get your hands on a fun box, they're typically around thirty dollars, and and the, and they're usually there's the mystery box, but usually there's enough meat on the bone, so to speak, for resellers to buy them. And I know you said you were keeping some of the things, you're reselling some of the other things. It, it, there used to be enough meat on the bone. Uh, right. up has changed that so much. Okay. Okay. So. It used to be where if you ordered from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, a fun box, and you and you knew that your order was coming from there, right. it was you automatically knew that you were going to get something quality that was going to be packed with care that looks like it had really been thought out. And the Arizona ones were just crap. Okay. I mean, they were just crap. You would get like the cheapest of everything, and, and it just was thrown just, in there, wasn't packaged properly. Yeah. Right now. Um, Arizona hasn't really improved since then, but Philadelphia or not Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, right. Mechanicsburg has really right. kind of gone downhill since then. Okay. okay. I was lucky to get the box that I got. Um, we did a collaboration across eight resellers and I was extremely lucky to get the box that I got because some of those boxes were just uh, one lady got like five skeins of yarn and they counted that as five of the, of the 12 things that she was supposed to get. And it's not that yarn doesn't resell, but when you're looking for like a Victoria's Secret or a pair right. of Ray-Ban sunglasses or things that they've done in the past, to get to get a skein of yarn is almost an insult. Yeah, you I mean, think, it's just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, poor Windy City resell. So, um, so the, the Philadelphia has gone down too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Still not All Arizona right. bad, but yeah. Not. Okay. So there's, there's not as much. Uh, like I, I call it meat on a bone because that's how resellers talk, but there's, exactly. there's enough profit potential, let's call it, uh, exactly. on these, these fun boxes as there used to be. And then typically Pennsylvania was better than Arizona, but now they're kind of both not really great. Is what's my yeah, opinion. Arizona is still Arizona, yeah, and but the bottom of the pile for me, yeah. but. Not, and the weird thing is that they they also have uh, offices in Atlanta, not Atlanta, but uh, Swanee, Georgia, and I think they just opened up one in Dallas. Okay. And um, so you you don't get fun boxes so far. You don't get them from Dallas, but I don't know if Dallas is shipping out anything yet. Um, but I've never gotten a fun box from Swanee, Georgia. I wonder if they even send out fun boxes from okay. there. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure that they do that. Gotcha. I always throw this out there, and I just because. Resellers like to hear this kind of like, you know, resellers, most resellers like like the thrill of the hunt, so to speak, a treasure hunt as opposed to listing. And I always ask my resellers, what was your like your biggest like success, your biggest, your biggest flip? Do you have anything that kind of stands out that you bought something for a few dollars and sold it for a ton of money or anything in particular? Um, gosh, yes, uh, I got, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember what the this is so bad. I can't remember what the brand was, Okay. Um, but it was an Italian brand. It was a silk blouse. It was, okay. it had like a pussy boat. It was, it was polka dot. It was so cute. Got it for $4 at a, at a uh, Salvation Army. Okay. Slipped it, And I made 85 bucks on that thing. Okay, great. Yeah. So that was but one the, of my top ones, but it just, I, I honestly, I can't. Well, I know you, you had a crazy day. 
Dan and I both had kind of crazy days. I had a bunch of doctor's appointments. She's running a bunch of errands. So we're a little, little, little scatterbrained. You got to forgive us. But <laughs> anyway, so I'm not going to ask you any more, any more difficult questions. We're going to have a little fun portion. Oh, uh, yay. Okay. Guys, you know, I, I always ask my guests uh, what they want to talk about. And I always do a pre-interview. Everybody does these shows differently. It's just I, I share with you guys. I, I had ADD before I even knew what ADD was. So <laughs> I, was, I, I like to keep on track. So uh, I always do a pre-interview with my guests. And uh to remind you guys, I'm always looking for all the resellers to bring on. I figure that's a good segue. If any of you, some of you are new in the chat, you know, you're, you're friends of Dana, maybe I would love to have you on a show. You know, if you're interested, I do it every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but anyway, so uh, talking with Dana, and I know she likes to have fun, and she's real high energy and positive. And <laughs> I said, all right, well, let's, let's have a little bit of fun. So those of you in the chat, you're, you're welcome to answer along in the chat if you like, or, in, you know, but we're going to do some... Um, some of the the best would you rather questions. Oh, so we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit of fun here, and uh, I'm actually gonna give you a softball to start with, Dana, because I actually asked you this on our, our chat right before the show. Yeah. Okay. Uh, w- uh, would you rather live with a barnyard of animals in your house or live in a barn with the animals? I would rather live in a barn with the animals. I would definitely rather do that because that way I know that they're all in their own spaces. And they're not like, they're not like eating my groceries and, you know, we've all got our own little space and I don't have to clean up poop out of my living room, like all the time or like have to find the hidden poop spot. So yeah, definitely, definitely I'd be in the barn. I'd be in the barn before I'd have any barn animals in my house for sure. Okay. I just Uh, got new floors. This this is kind of like a, uh, I don't know how I would describe this question, but I I thought it was kind of, kind of unusual. Um, Would you rather... Get rich in a way that disappoints your family or just making enough money to live. Hmm. I thought that was kind of interesting. I kind of, I actually gave that some thought about that. I thought it was kind of a, like an intriguing kind of question. Yeah. Um, I would probably I just... mean, like ill gotten gains, I guess, as opposed to just working, yeah. you know, busting your rear end working retail or whatever, you know, I would probably, gosh, that's a toughie for me because on the one hand, it depends on which factions of my family I'm disappointing. <laughs> there are some people that I'm just like, whatever. Um, if it were my kids, um, in that particular instance, if it were my kids or my grandkids, then yeah, I would probably just rather, you know, plow my way through it and and you know, try to figure out how to work smarter and not harder in the end. But yeah. Sure, sure, absolutely. Definitely wouldn't want to bring shame on them. Where Veronica says that your other answer about the poop was was a good point. <laughs> <Bring up the poop. laughs> okay. Here's here's another one I had, I had to give a little bit of thought to. Would you rather have no internet or no cell phone? No internet. No internet. You got to have that cell phone, right? I can do everything from my cell phone. Plus, I can make calls from it. So, yeah. Go. Absolutely. I wouldn't I'm be happy not... about it. Don't get me wrong. Oh no, no. Oh yeah. Right. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, here, here's a good one for you too. And, uh, you look very young, but you have grandchildren. So, uh, would you rather go back in time to meet your ancestors or go into the future to meet your great grandchildren? Oh, that's a toughie. That's a toughie. Um, I'd probably go into the future. I, I, the past looks really cool through rose colored glasses, Mm -hmm. but the truth, the God's honest truth is that, you know, it probably, it would smell bad to me and the food would make me sick. (laughs) Honestly. Well, well, yeah, I guess (laughs) they used to have that show and I, I, yeah, they didn't have Febreze. Oh, for bringing that up. But yeah, right. Yeah, they didn't have Febreze, but (laughs) they used to have that show. I guess it was back like in the early 80s where they used to to travel back in time and used to go to these different things and he would like pretend to be these other people and they would actually look like the people. But yeah, I guess you got a point there. I guess they didn't really have uh, food wasn't preserved properly and had great refrigeration and uh, maybe you would get sick when you're traveling back in time. Mercury poisoning, lead poisoning, they put morphine in everything. You couldn't even have a soft drink without without drinking cocaine. Well, that may be a good. No, I'm joking. I'm, I... <laughs> Anthony says, "Don't go back in time. We don't need to know where we come from." <laughs> right? We know where we come from. Yeah. We know enough to scare us. There you go. Okay, I ask you a couple more here. Let's see here. Um, hmm, this this is kind of this is kind of a deep one. Uh, wait, let me come back. That was that's a little too deep. Okay. Uh, 
here's kind of a weird one. Would you rather never brush your teeth or never brush your hair again? Never brush my hair. Okay. Yeah, I can always I can always wash my hair and finger comb it and you know braid it if I have to, but you can't. Uh uh-uh. uh. I I I'm a tooth person. I'm a breath person. There's no way. Okay. Would you rather eat fast food every day or never eat at any restaurant again? Uh, fast food every day, probably. I'm not going to lie. Okay. That's a good one. Okay. They have salads, right? Yeah. <laughs> I eat those, but they have them. Well, I don't know how good they are, but yeah, right? <laughs> here's another Here's another one that, that I'll ask you the, the deeper question. Would you rather live somewhere where it rains most days or somewhere where it never rains ever? Um, oh gosh, I would have to say rains, rain most days. I actually am a rainy weather girl. I'm a cold weather okay. girl. Oh, you are. Okay. Girl. okay. Yeah. Like I love fall. I love like a cold rainy day sitting inside by a fire. I love that. Okay. So yeah, to sit, to be in some place with no water, mm-mm, couldn't handle it. Okay. I'm going to ask you a little bit deep question. I actually was scrolling through these questions before and it's like, well, this is a little bit deep. I don't, I don't know about this question. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Um, Here's a deep question. Now I'm going to, I'm going to maybe bring it down a little bit. Deep like thoughts. Would you rather know the date of your death or the cause mm-hmm. of your death? Uh, gosh, probably date. Isn't that? Yeah. 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 I don't know. I, be, I, that I, they'll be all stressed out about worrying about, well, I guess you could probably plan everything, get everything in order and yeah, like stay like, in order, make arrangements for your children and your, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's like get my well planned out, make sure everybody's yeah, taken yeah. care of, plan a big old party because you, you know. Go. Well, yeah, I know you said you're Irish, and they like to have the big the party oh, makes, right? Yeah, we'll have like <laughs> a lot of times we'll have like two day funerals. We have some really funny funeral stories in my family. I'll okay. I'll have to Aunt Boo and I will have to do a special on that one night, right, gotcha. maybe for Halloween. Okay, great. Well, I, I, like I said, Dana said you would have a little bit of fun. We kind of ended on a serious note, but I figured we'd have a little bit of fun or so and. I always so want much. to kind of kind of flow with what my my guests want to talk about. Uh, why don't you tell us about your YouTube channel? Your, your you have a classy crap auction coming up, and whatever else you'd like to share. Absolutely, um, I do have some classy crap coming up uh, for sale. Everything starts. Every single bid starts at a dollar on Saturday morning. It's starting at 10 a.m. Central. Um, we have, I have everything. I have lighting that's new in box that my husband and I ordered and they sent it to us and it was the wrong uh, finish. So Amazon's like, keep it. And I'm like, okay. And I've tried to sell it on Poshmark and lighting doesn't sell that well on Poshmark. And I want to have to shoot it put it on ebay so it's stuff like that i have a house full of death pile guys i have got to get this shovel this stuff out of my house so everything starts at a dollar um it's helping me because it's getting me used to selling on uh whatnot and things Mm -hmm. like that um we also have besides the classy crap auction i also have a listing challenge um so if you can run with the big dogs if you want to run with the big dogs come get off the porch um if not you know come pop on the chat and and keep me company and say hi at some point we're going to be going from 10 a.m until 10 p.m central on august the 27th um, the 50 item listing challenge i'm going to try to get 50 items in in 12 hours we'll see how that goes wow okay I didn't read that description. 50 items in 12 hours. Okay. Yeah. And then Ampu and I have a pre recorded uh, video every week on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. Central. Um, we drop uh, things like thrifts and giggles, friend mail, um, thread up unboxings, uh, how to videos, all sorts of things. So usually it's 6 p.m. and it's a premiere. So it's always a live chat. So it's always kind of fun for that. Okay. So when you run the premiere, you're actually in the chat. Uh huh. And Boo and I both are usually, yeah. Well, that's great, because I know some people run their premieres and are not in a chat. It's like, well, okay, well, first of all, it says it's live, which is not yeah. technically not live. And then people are, a lot of people that do them aren't even in a chat. It's like, well, okay, you're on a premiere. Yeah. But you're not, you're not in right. the chat, and it's not live. It's like, okay. If you're in a chat, it's a little different, because maybe some people have questions about something you're talking about. They want to ask you about that or comment on it. You're in a chat. You can respond to it. But if you know, some people don't, are not even in the chat. So yeah, it's like that. come to my yeah. house and hang out, and then you're not there. And yeah, then you'll leave. <laughs> right. Yeah, then you'll leave. Exactly. Right. Like at least Aunt Boo or I will always be there. One gotcha. of the two of us gotcha. when, we, when we have a premiere. Yeah. All right. Very good. Okay, guys. And uh, what I, I told you, I mentioned earlier, if some of you may have come in the chat a little bit later. I always list my uh, my guest uh, contact information. I mean, I have uh, Dana's YouTube channel. I have the link to her uh, classy crap auction as well in the chat. So. Uh, 
you guys are you know, want to know where that is or when it is. And obviously, you know, I would like you to subscribe if possible to uh, Dana's channel if you have not already. So that's all in the link in the description of the video. So anyway, uh, guys, you know, I, I always talk about the end of the show. If, if at all possible, you're enjoying the channel, getting any kind of value. Uh, there's costs involved like anything else, like a reselling business. So I uh, really appreciate it if you guys could help me out. Uh, I have uh, Cash App, buy me a cup of coffee. I also have Randy's link. Uh, I've talked about Randy almost every show, what a great reseller he is and a great uh, person, a friend friend of mine. And I really appreciate Randy. So anyway, Randy has a website, uh, faces.com, which is in the description. So he sells uh, coffees, teas, uh, spices, and old-fashioned candies that you guys probably remember from the time you were younger. And Randy has some very competitive prices, really good product on uh, selling. So if you guys register on his site and use an AE when you register, uh, Randy pays me a little commission at no cost to you guys, and it helps me out. So anyway, I always say time is your most valuable asset. I'd like to thank Dana for her time, mm -hmm. and also those of you here on the live and watching the replay. Uh, I just want to remind you guys, if you can, leave a thumbs up, subscribe. And if you're kind enough, you can leave a comment. Uh, I know Dana talks about that on her channel as well. If you leave a comment, it helps uh, promote the video, so to speak. Algorithms, so, yes. The algorithm. Got to, got to keep in mind the algorithm. Adam, thank you so much for having me on tonight. That's awesome. Thank you. I enjoyed it. I had thank a great you so time. much, guys. So, again, I'm just going to repeat that too, guys. If you're still in the chat, anyone interested in coming on, I would always appreciate you guys. And uh, contact me. All my social media is in the description of the video. We shall see you again next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Take care all now. Bye, guys.